welcome back students once again to the second part of our discussion from the chapter mechanical properties of solids now let's quickly move to the topic up till which we had discussed in our previous class we had introduced the concept of hooke's law and i told you that robert hooke found that within the elastic limit the stress is directly proportional to strain so we have stress proportional to strain or stress is equal to k times strain where k is the constant of proportionality called elastic modulus of the material now at this point i would like to tell you that there are some materials that do not obey hooke's law like rubber or say human muscle let's study about types of modulus of rigidity now the first one being young's modulus and it is given by y it is defined as the ratio of normal stress to the longitudinal strain within the elastic limit so y is equal to longitudinal stress divided by longitudinal strain now it has same units as stress because strain does not have any unit so young's modulus is measured in newton per meter square or pascal metals generally have large values of young's modulus compared to other materials in scientific terms the higher the young's modulus of the material the more elastic it is let's move to the next type it is called bulk modulus of rigidity it is given by k and it is equal to normal stress divided by volumetric strain so we can write down this to be equal to minus of f by a divided by delta v by v as there is a decrease in volume that's why we put a negative sign Now f by a is equal to pressure, so we can write down minus p v divided by delta v. Now the SI unit of bulk modulus is also newton per meter square. At this point, we shall also define a term called compressibility. Compressibility of a material is the reciprocal of its bulk modulus of elasticity. coming to the third group that is shear modulus or what is called the modulus of rigidity now it is given by eta and this is equal to tangential stress divided by shear strain so we can write it to be equal to f by a and shear strain is given by gamma so this will be equal to f by a gamma 
the SI unit of shear modulus is also Newton per meter square and the shear modulus of a material is always considerably smaller than the Young's modulus for it. Let's now discuss a very important topic from this lesson that is the stress versus strain curve. Now, just have a closer look into the graph. Let's understand this particular graph that has been plotted to show the strain versus stress curve for a metal wire which is gradually being loaded. It is the stress versus strain curve for a metal wire which is gradually being loaded. Now as I said, let's understand this particular graph in parts. Now let's put in name over here. Let's name this position as E. So the initial part, the initial part OA, the initial part OA of the graph is a straight line, isn't it? It is a straight line indicating that stress is proportional to strain. So up to point A up to point A, Hooke's law is obeyed. That is the reason the point A is called the proportional limit. As you can see, it is labeled clearly in the graph. In this region, the wire is perfectly elastic. The wire is perfectly elastic. Now, after the point A, after the point A, the stress is not proportional to strain and a curved portion AB, a curved portion AB is obtained. However, if the load is removed at any point between O and B, if the load is removed between any point between O and B, the curve is retraced along BAO and the wire attains its original length. That is the reason why the portion OB of the graph, portion OB of the graph is called the elastic region. Portion OB of the graph is called the elastic region and the point B is called the elastic limit or yield point. The stress corresponding to B the stress corresponding to B is called the yield strength. Now what happens beyond the point B? Beyond the point B, the strain increases more rapidly than stress. Now, if the load is removed at any point C, the wire does not come back to its original length, but traces the dashed line. You can see there is a dotted line. Even on reducing the stress to zero, a residual strain equal to OE, OE is left in the wire. The material is said to have acquired a permanent set. The fact that stress versus strain curve is not retraced on reversing the strain is called elastic hysteresis. Now, if the load is increased beyond the point C, there is a large increase in the strain or the length of the wire. In this region, the constrictions that may be called as necks and waists develop at few points along the length of the wire and the wire breaks ultimately at the point D called the fracture point. Now, in the region between B and D, 
the length of the wire goes on increasing even without any addition of load. This region is called the plastic region. And the material is said to undergo plastic flow or plastic deformation. The stress corresponding to the breaking point is called ultimate strength or tensile strength of the material. So, this is a complete analysis of the stress versus strain curve and this particular analysis is also very important from the examination point of view. I would like to tell you at this point that the bodies return to their original state on the removal of the deforming force. Now, some bodies return to their original state immediately after the removal of the deforming force while some bodies take longer time to do so. The delay in regaining the original state of a body on the removal of the deforming force is called elastic after effect. Now, the property of an elastic body by virtue of which its behavior becomes less elastic under the action of repeated alternating deforming force is called elastic fatigue. We can categorize the materials into different categories such as ductile materials, the materials which have large plastic range of extension as you can see in this graph. The materials which have large plastic range of extension are called ductile materials. Such materials undergo an irreversible increase in length before snapping. So, they can be drawn into thin wires, for example, copper, silver, iron and aluminium. While on the other hand, the materials which have very small range of plastic extension are called brittle materials. Such materials break as soon as the stress is increased beyond the elastic limit. For example, you can have cast iron, glass or ceramics. We also have a category called elastomers. The materials for which strain produced is much larger than the stress applied within the limit of elasticity are called elastomers. For example, rubber, the elastic tissue of aorta, the large vessel carrying blood from heart. Elastomers have no plastic range. So, this will be all regarding the discussion from this lesson. Thank you.